You've got high net worth people who want to own multiple homes across the world, and Los Angeles offers something different. If you want to drive your convertible car 12 months a year, it's a city where you can do that. Well, that's really, hey, that's a reason to live, isn't it, Robert? That really shows high, high intellect there. I'm living in L.A. because I drive a convertible car 12 months a year, you schmuck. Homes priced, it just shows, this story proves one thing, that the rich are no different than the average person, they just have money. Homes priced at more than $100 million are becoming increasingly common as billionaires seeking palaces to put, places to put cash, shatter sales records from Los Angeles to London. Around the world, five properties sold for $100 million or more last year, and at least 23 others of nine figures asking price. Eight bedroom, 15 bathroom. How big a house do you need? I really don't understand that. Uh, I have, you know, I'm not going to get into it because I try to keep some of my personal life to myself. I have several different properties. But you know the house I live in is about 2,000 square feet? It's, I call it my loft. It's, um, it's basic. It's like a little tiny house. And it, it's small. And I have no real electronic controls in it. I have uh, light switches. I cannot stand houses that are run electronically they drive me insane i don't like to have to go get my eyeglasses to turn a light bulb on or to get a glass of water i i don't know about you but uh, apparently uh, you know the, the modern all the great houses have that in them an ipad you walk around the house you could turn on and off the air conditioning the burglar alarm a light uh, this a sink a radio a television it's very nice but there's something comforting about getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and without having to look knowing where the light switches to the bathroom without having to get glasses or a magnifying glass. I like simple. Simple is good. So I have a 2,000 square foot house in which I broadcast some of the time. I do everything else in it. I mean, one little house, I call it my loft. If you came in it, you wouldn't see it as a house, though. It looks like a workspace. Every, every inch of the house is given over to work or sleep or other bodily functions. And uh, the radio kitchen is not too far from the microphone. The radio stove is not. You can even hear me cooking it sometimes during a break. Well, you can't because the ads are running. But the staff can hear me turning on and off refrigerators and light bulbs. And So I don't know. How big a house do you really need? I, you know, it's not for me to tell you what you want. Does it make you happier? Have, do you think having a $115 million house would make you happier? The answer, resoundingly, is probably I don't know. If you're Ben Carson, I mean, if you're falling asleep, in one bed in your bedroom, would you really know if you have 15 other bedrooms to fall asleep in? It's the Savage Nation back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Look, we have breaking news on the show in the midst of all of this lifestyle stuff. It came as a shock to me. I just got it a minute ago, and it only came out uh, within the last 30 minutes. But I, I feel obligated to tell you this news. You know, I am syndicated by the greatest syndicator in America, which is Cumulus Media Networks. And they renewed my contract after I had such a terrible situation with my last syndicator. And as you, you know what happened with my last syndicator. It took me a fortune to get myself free of them, the last uh, one. And uh, they never, the other ones, never paid me a dime of what they owe me, that the court said they owe me, they're hiding. But we'll get it. So I have, I have great respect for Cumulus Media. I just read this, I almost fell out of my chair. Headline, Dickey Brothers out at Radio Giant Cumulus amid board shakeup. A shock, because I knew both Lou and John Dickey, I wouldn't say I knew them as friends, but I knew them as business associates. And I have nothing but the highest regard for both of these men. And uh, all I can say is, you know, when I was in New York a month ago and broadcasting live from WABC, I had heard there was a board meeting on the same floor as the studio in which I was broadcasting. And given that I'm not a shy person, I sent Lou and John an email saying, hey, guys, do you know I'm 15 feet away from you? Stop it on the way out and say hello. And I was... I was honored, frankly, that Lou Dickey came in and watched my show for 15 minutes. And uh, I think he, he's always enjoyed my radio uh, broadcasts. And he said nice things, and he left after a break. And it says, here's the headline. It just came out of the New York Post. I'm shocked right now. Cumulus Media CEO Lou Dickey and his brother, the number two executive of the radio giant, stepped down from the Atlanta company on Tuesday following a board shakeup. Several sources confirmed to the New York Post. 
the company which owns syndication outfit Westwood One and operates 460 stations in 90 U.S. markets. Wow, this is awful. This is just awful. And all I can say is two of the finest men I have ever met are Lou and John Dickey, and I wish them the best, whatever they may uh, choose to do in the near future. What a shock. What a shock. I'll be back with more breaking news and lifestyle right here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. Savage. You know, I'm looking at the stories I've been doing today, my lifestyle stuff. I have a fifth sense, and I knew that I didn't want to do news today because the news I just read you is the biggest news in the radio business. Look what I've been talking about. How do you fight depression without medication? Is God real? How do you know? Now, what is romantic love? Is it real? It has nothing to do with it. But the last one is, what is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you regret, that you wish you could undo? And now I read that the whole radio business is somewhat just just had a cataclysm. This is like earth and upheaval in radio. Do you know that? I don't know any more about it than what I read in the New York Post, and I know who the new CEO is, and I wish her the best in managing uh, the radio business. But good God, this is a cataclysm, what just happened. Now, I can't open this up to calls because what can we say that we, what's there to say? What, what is there to say? God God only knows what's coming in radio. You know, people say, well, radio is, is dead. Then the others say, no, it's one of the most influential listened to mediums in the world. And it is. All data will indicate, no matter what people say about the internet or streaming or the future, and it may be that right now radio is the most influential of all outlets in terms of people listening and receiving information. It also has one, perhaps the largest audience overall. It's not gone down. You may think it has, but it really hasn't. And I'm proud to be in radio for 21 years. It's been quite a ride, and I hope I'm in it for another few years. I'm sure I will be. As long as there's radio and I have a voice, I'll be on the air one place or another. But this is a cataclysm in the radio business, and it's a, it demarks a very big change in direction for the entire industry in ways we probably can't even imagine. So I, I have nothing to add to this discussion. And I don't think uh, it's worth talking about because it's only going to be speculation as to where radio is going to go, what radio should do to become more, what should I say, more competitive? How much more competitive can it be? Well, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Which way should radio go? It's something that we in radio, you know, radio is bigger than talk radio. There's country music, there's sports radio, there's news, right? And having been in the business for 21 years, I would say that I know as much about radio as anybody in the business. That includes anybody. I don't care who, how big the CEO is. I know radio as well as anybody. There was a time that I was on a local station, KSFO in San Francisco, which still takes my show, by the way, where my ratings are great. There was a time when I began in 1994, 5, 6, in those days, I was beating the competitor, which was an all-new station. I was... I was in drive time in the afternoon, many of you listen, I was beating KCBS on a daily basis. I was beating them. People liked my show better than all news. They loved opinion. That's not true anymore. Things have changed, and I don't know why. I don't know the dynamics of why. But I'm still doing very well. You look at some of the stations I'm on, the ratings are great. You look at WMAL in Washington. My show is unbelievable with a four share. That's enormous for talk radio today. So I, I don't want to talk more about this. I don't know anything about where radio is going to go, where it should go to maintain more viability. All I know is that something happened today that's going to shake up the industry. That's all I can tell you. And uh, I think that anyone in talk radio who doesn't have a long-term contract uh, ought to be looking for a web television show because those days are, <laughs> those days are over. Unbelievable to me. So you want to go back to what I was doing or you want to just do news? You want to talk about is God real, uh, depression, romantic love? Let's do some of those things on the show, including romantic love. I think that's a great topic because is romantic love real or is it self-delusion? Is a, is a fascinating topic because is there a person listening to this show who has never been in love? Children can feel love. And as I said, we're very limited in, in the English language. Because we have only one verb, Teddy. I'm talking to my dog now, staring at me. We have only one verb for love in English. I love my mother. 
I love my pizza. Oh, I love my new shoes. I love my dog. I love my girlfriend. Now, if you have only one, Robert's laughing and he's got hot coffee in his mouth and he just went to his wedding rehearsal. Sorry, Robert. Uh, no, the truth is we're stuck. We have to use inflection to describe what kind of love we're talking about. While Latin has 16 different verbs for love. We're limited in our love. I don't know what the Chinese language has to do with love. I would assume, is there a word for love in the, in the Arabic or it doesn't exist? Or is it only I hate and I kill? I don't know. I haven't studied Arabic. I really don't know. No good. Russian must have love in it because there have been romantic novels, but basically it's everything is dark and bleak. No good, not good, nothing good. World is black, no good. Not good, bad day, no good, not good. But Italian, everything is good to the in Italian language. Good, bueno, bono, bueno. Everything is good, better, very good, not very, excellent, better than good. Bueno, bono, bella. It has to do with the people too. Russian, no good. Black, no good. Horrible, dismal. World come, no good. Potato skins, everything bad. So let's go to the the callers. Daniel, line three. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, romance and love. I uh, Two years ago, I was just wandering along. I'm over 60, and uh, I met a young lady, and God, she just gave me renewed spirit. Something in me, myself. But there was something beautiful in her, and... It just inspires me, and it's given me, like, a new beginning. How, how, how old are you, Daniel? Over 60, sir. And how old is she? 30. Well, all right. Not another Russian bride, is it? I pointed that out to her. I said I could... No, but I'm saying, but, but Daniel, is she another Russian bride that you met online? No, no, she's, no, she's, she's half black, she's half white. She's a wonderful human being. And you don't think the age difference has anything to do with it, or you say that it has everything to do with it? I don't know. As we're going along, uh, we, we keep adjusting. I mean, you know, people stereotype us, but that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother her. Uh, you know, uh, we smell the flowers. We talk about your dog, Teddy. Uh, God, it takes me away from the ugly stuff that we... Yes. How long have you been together, Daniel? Over two years. Oh, well, that's a pretty long time. Most marriages don't last two years today, so I'd say you're pretty much out of the woods. Yes. Uh, we've, see? We've, you see? I mean, I acknowledge that. Two years is a long time. Are you are you living together? No, not yet. Well, I'll off. tell you that. You know, that helps, too. You know, living living day to day with someone is a real test, Daniel. You know, you've been married before? Oh, yes. Oh, so I don't have to tell you anything. You're an old pro at this. But, you know, you, you live with someone. It's a different story, isn't it? Yeah, we've lived together for a few months. She goes back to mom. She's got younger sisters. So, you know, we both have responsibilities, but we're dealing with life on a daily basis. And we keep yeah, but one, one, toothbrush, one toothbrushing and, and a spitting in the sink can end the romance, if you're not careful. <laughs> everything, everything's here. Living, everything is, you know. Uh, you're, you're laughing. I'm not kidding you. I mean, reality is reality. I, you know, I hate it when movies became so real that I, I stopped watching the movies. There was a time in the 80s that all of a sudden, every movie, they showed people brushing their teeth and spitting in the sink like I cared about it. What did they do that for? I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> it was crazy. How did that enter the movies? It was like, ugh. To this day, if I'm watching an 80s movie and I see that scene, I turn the, I turn the movie off. I can't stand it. My okay, well, so you, you, the bottom line is you called on my challenge. Uh, is romantic love real or self-delusion? You're saying it's real. Absolutely. All right. That's all. There's a man who's in love and he's happy. Here's one coming up now. Biggest mistake he ever made in his life. None of these calls are prompted. None of these are scripted. Everyone is on the natch on the Savage Nation, which is why I've survived 21 years. Either it's natural and real or it's not going to make it. Bradley, WVNN in Alabama. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Uh, looking at pornography. That's the worst thing that I've ever done in my life. You did it once or you did it many times? Oh, I've, I've done it many times, and it's a constant struggle that I have daily. You know, your eyes cannot unsee anything. I try to tell my kids that daily, but your eyes can't unsee. So now you always got that vision in your head. Now, are, are, you, in, are you married? Oh, I am, yes. Well, porges a, pornography is a scourge. 
I personally think it should be banned. I personally think America would be a better place if it was illegal.